Gary, uh, your former Manchester United teammate, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, no longer in charge of Manchester United. With the situation going from bad to worse the way it did yesterday, was there an air of inevitability about this? Uh, yes, been coming for the last few weeks. The performances have been terrible. The results have been shocking. Yesterday was a wimpish performance at Watford. Uh, I think you're always hoping that the club would, or the players would, um, respond and that the two-week international break would bring some sort of what would be freshness, but it looked like they had the world uh, on their shoulders. Their performance levels over the last few weeks have dipped, and when a manager can't get a performance out of his players um, and the results are getting as bad as they are, then in this game you, you know, you're going to lose your job. How did it get this bad? Because it's not the first time that Ole has experienced a bit of a, a blip as Manchester United manager. Uh, so what's gone so wrong in, in the last few weeks? Yeah, he's always had that result that has, has, uh, in the past pulled him out of the mire where you thought it might get a little bit too uh, tricky for him. But this time the, the results have just got worse and worse and worse. And the worst thing is the performances. And the team have looked all over the place yesterday. I mean, I, I didn't see the game yesterday, but I saw the sort of highlights and saw the uh, some of the goals. I mean, the defending is absolutely woeful. The goalkeeper, the defenders, and that's a back four, a back five that have played together a number of times. You know, Watford aren't the best team in the league by a long stretch, but they got mauled Manchester United yesterday. All they couldn't get a performance out of them in the end. The players looked drained of confidence, um, and I'm not surprised today that it's ended. Um, and look, I said a few weeks ago, the worst that could have happened for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer yeah. is that he became a bridge from what would be, I thought, quite a dark period for the club to what I think may be hopefully a positive future. They need to get the next appointment right. That's probably going to be the end of the season. Yeah, we'll come on to that in a minute and where the club go next. But just going back to yesterday, something quite interesting at full time. Bruno Fernandes going over to the visiting uh, United fans at Vicarage Road and trying to gesticulate and say it was our fault. Don't necessarily blame Ole, I just wondered what you thought of, of Bruno doing that and whether it was the right decision in some ways for Ole to go. Look, I think in terms of sort of Bruno going over to the fans and saying it's not all on Ole, I think that's absolutely right and it's what players should do. They should take responsibility uh, with the manager. Um, the fact of the matter is, when it's spiralling out of control like it has in the last few weeks, I mean, look, seven or eight weeks ago there was euphoria at Old Trafford. And within seven or eight weeks, it's just completely deteriorated. Look, he's going over to the fans there. He's waving goodbye. Some of the fans have obviously had a go. They're very upset. They're emotional after what is a terrible performance and result. And the players have gone over with him. Um, but I've never been there where a manager um, in a dressing room where the players have felt so drained in confidence. I don't think, that, I don't think those players are players that don't care. I, I, I don't buy that. I think they actually are a good group of lads. And I think, to be fair, they've, over the last two years, they've been growing progressively better. What's happened these last two months, I can't explain. Villarreal at home, Everton, Villa's where it started. And they just looked so open, they looked so blasé in terms of fact they thought they could go and beat anybody. And they've not been able to get right since. A little bit of something that taught them away, which brought them back a little bit. But they've looked rudderless on the pitch, rudderless off the pitch. And it certainly caught everyone by surprise. No one, you know, when Ronaldo signed that sort of eight to ten weeks ago, thought this was going to happen. Um, and I even a couple of weeks ago, even sort of before yesterday's game, felt that getting to the end of the season was the right thing to do if they could. They obviously haven't been able to do that. Yeah, just looking at the statement, Michael Carrick um, will take charge for the forthcoming matches, uh, whilst the club will look to appoint an interim until the end of the season. So, with what you were just saying there, does that tell you that this happened a bit earlier than expected for no, the club? They haven't planned for this. They haven't prepared for it. I don't think anybody would have done, like you say. It's, it's deteriorated so badly and so quickly. Um, Michael takes over now. Um, I suspect the only option the club had was to put someone into the end of the season. That's been obvious for the last few weeks. You know, if there was a world-class manager sat on the shelf, ready to go two, three weeks ago, I think Ollie would have been gone by now. I think the fact that, obviously, one, they believe in him, two, they try to let it go, but thirdly, they haven't had anybody to appoint. They, they haven't had anybody there, sat there in the wings waiting. There will be people at home who will say, well, Antonio Conte's just gone to Tottenham. He was never coming to Manchester United. Manchester United's board 
we're never going to appoint Antonio Conte. Whether you agree with that or not, whether you think he should have come to the club, I don't think Conte would have been a fit for Manchester United. Um, and I don't think there is an absolute perfect fit available at this moment in time. So they'll have to get somebody in temporarily until a manager becomes available. That can, I suppose, in some ways, take forward the work that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done. And in your mind, who should that somebody be? I'm not going to start. I mean, look, at the end of the day, Ollie's just been sacked this morning. I don't think it's right now at this point to say that who the next manager of Manchester United should be. How much of a plan do you think the club have? They don't have a plan for the next manager at this moment in time because obviously they, would have, they wouldn't be announcing that they're appointing an interim manager to the end of the season or yeah. that Michael Carrick would be coming in now. We've seen managers lose their jobs in the last few weeks. Nuno and Dean Smith at uh, Aston Villa, where there have been plans in place and, ready, uh, and you know, ready-made replacements to come in. Manchester United haven't got that plan. Um, and it's look, this is this is the third time now, I think, in the last eight years that a manager's been given a long-term contract or extension and lost the job within a few months. So the planning hasn't been great. You know, I, I don't really want to, to be fair, stick the knife in today to the club's owners, to the club's hierarchy. But you have to ask serious questions. You have to ask serious questions. I've had enough of it, to be honest. I've spoken too much about it over the last few years. I think the club is run on a business side, OK, but I think culturally and from a point of view of football decision-making, it leaves a lot to be desired, a lot to be desired. And the reality of it is they've been caught out again. They've been caught out in the last few weeks. They've not known what to do. They've been indecisive. You know, before the international break, they... Uh, sorry, before the, at the end, before the international break, they probably should have made the change if they were going to make it. I can see why they were trying to sort of crawl over the line because I think getting to the end of the season was the right plan. But yesterday it was quite clear that those players are not responding to the manager and the manager's not getting a tune out of the players. And that is something that I don't think is through dislike either way. I don't think the players dislike Oli Solskjaer. I don't think Oli dislikes the players. Sometimes when you just can't deliver, you know, I did it myself in Valencia. I don't think I was disliked by the players in Valencia. I just couldn't get a tune out of them. When you can't get a tune out of them and the results and performances are that bad, you end up going. I think you probably saw that in the statement as, as well. The club said that they wanted to thank Ole for his tireless effort. So for you, was it, was it like that there was no, not much more he could have thrown at it? No, it, I, I've got no doubts that every decision that that man has made in the last three and a half years he's been at this club, or three years he's been at this club, will have been for the best interest of Manchester United. He absolutely loves the club. So I've got no problems with respect to sort of his effort or his commitment, but... He couldn't get his team out on the pitch in the last two months to play football very well at all. They were really poor. And the players couldn't do it, bring it upon themselves, which tells you there's a lack of leaders and characters in the dressing room that can, to be fair, pull together a performance, irrespective of the manager's situation. And it's a, it's, it's a situation that we've seen before in football. It'll happen again, where ultimately it comes to the end of a road and you can see it coming and you're hoping there is still that last gasp somewhere. You're hoping that the, they can find that second wind and that third wind, but it just was never coming. And this was a horrific week three away games, culminating in Chelsea away next Sunday, but they've not got past first base this week. You know, Watford have mauled them, they've messed them around, they've outfought them, outrun them, outperformed them, and when Watford do that to you, it spells the end, obviously, and it has done for Ollie this morning. How do you think he will reflect on this? Do you think he... He will see it as a failure in any way? Um, well, look, one thing that Ollie, I always say managers deserve two or three years in a job. That's not always happened on my watch. But I think Ollie can't complain in the sense that he's been given three years, he's been backed in the transfer market. I don't think he can, like David Moyes, for instance, was given eight months um, and basically, you know, kicked out. I don't think that Ollie can complain about the time that he's been given and the money that he's been afforded. And I don't think he can also complain about the, the players that have been delivered to him. So I don't think he will complain about it. I think he'll be massively disappointed about the fact that he's not been able to deliver better performances this season. I think that he expected a lot more. We all expected a lot more. And only he, the players, and you might never get to the bottom if it will understand what's gone wrong in this last couple of months. What has gone wrong? Why has it gone from a club that were progressing last season and the season before, third to second, and all of a sudden it's just fallen apart in the last few weeks where they don't look like they've ever seen each other? They don't look like they can always pass the ball to each other. They don't know how to, how to defend with each other. They don't know what shape. They're changing shape continuously. And that, I'd say, is a back five yesterday that played in that game. And the midfield too, we've been together for a number of years, so you're not talking about integrating loads of new players in that team that played yesterday. But 
the confidence is just shot to pieces. They're all over the place. And Oli will reflect upon it with sadness at the end, but he should be proud of the work that he did in the first two or three years. I think he rebuilt the clubs might be going too far, but he rebuilt the soul of the club. The club was in a dark place at the end of the Jose Mourinho era. There were some players in that dressing room who were there for the money, who were mercenary. And I think now at least the players in the dressing room, I think they're good lads, they're good players. They're not performing at the moment, so they need to sort themselves out. And that yesterday was a shambles, irrespective of the manager they've got. So they've got a game, I think, on Tuesday night, a couple of days away, where they've got to perform. And they've got Chelsea next Sunday. And they'll get battered on live television in front of the whole country next Sunday if they don't sort themselves out. So they've got some work to do this week on the training pitch.